Juicing is almost an insurance policy for those of us that don't eat enough vegetables on a regular basis anyway. We're just better off throwing it into a juicer, drinking it and knowing, whew, at least I've got my greens for the day, yeah. regardless on what happens throughout the rest of the day. Empowering you organically, delivering content you trust with results you love. Welcome, beautiful people, to another episode of Empowering You Organically. I'm joined by my co-host, Terry Ann Trevenin. Hey, everyone. And today is part two of our top 10 reasons to drink green juice daily. So on our last podcast, we went through a lot of things around juicing. We also talked about number 10 through number six on why to juice. Yep. To give a quick recap, number 10 was liquids and just about how a lot of us are dehydrated and it helps hydrate your body. Yep. Number nine is the specific vitamins and minerals that you get simply from juicing. Um, phytochemicals was number eight. Number seven, protein from non-meat sources. And number six, the quick absorption. So let's just jump right back into it. Let's go to number five. And number five is less digestive work. So when you drink juice, you save your body energy. It doesn't have to do as much digesting. It also helps maintain your supply of digestive enzymes. You do not use as many. What's really interesting is how much energy we take to break down food and to digest. Um, I don't think people think about that a lot, how your body works while it's working. It, yeah, and you know, if you start your day off with a, a big breakfast, um, uh, oftentimes, I mean, a lot of your energy is going to go to digesting that food. Yeah. It's interesting. It's a book that came out in the 80s. Um, why is it not fit for life? And the author talks about only having fruits before noon because the fruits kind of move past the stomach right into your intestines and you don't have to waste that energy digesting it, yet you get the energy from the fruit that you consume. Interesting. Um, and it's something I want to play around with. I remember my mom talking about it when I was younger and I, I have the book here and, and have heard others talk about it. And it's, it is interesting. I've been doing a lot of water fasts lately um, and I've been doing extended day water fasts and you absolutely get more energy. You start hitting day three, day four of a water only fast all of a sudden you're having a harder time falling asleep. You have all of this energy because you're not wasting so much energy on digesting food. Yeah. So interesting that, you know, you say that because like, um, and I spoke about this on our last, last podcast. Like when I wake up in the morning, I work out first thing in the morning. I don't eat for like an hour to an hour and a half after I drink water. And then I juice, I eat a bowl of fruit and my juice is more filled with veggies than fruits. But I juice, drink my juice, eat a bowl of fruit, and then I do a smoothie with bone broth and collagen and banana, so another fruit and water and ice, and it's just all liquid. And then I don't eat lunch until typically 12, 30 or one, and I'll eat a pretty decent sized lunch full of vegetables and a little bit of protein. And yeah, I mean, I, I think it's really fascinating thinking about your body having to break things down and taking that energy. When I do that routine in the morning, I never feel like I'm dragging. Like, I feel like I have so much energy. I don't know what to do with it. It's like, I'm amped up for the day. I'm ready to go. I feel like I could conquer the world. Like, I can feel my energy boost. Um, and it lags a little bit between that time I work out and then when I get those nutrients in my body. But um, it's just what works for me. And so I definitely think, you know, our body has to do work to process food, which I don't think we internalize that a lot and it does take away from that energy that you, especially in the morning when you need it absolutely i mean it's it's interesting as we as we're talking about digestion and how much energy it takes i do most of my working out fasted right so i, I go running in the morning on an empty stomach um i don't lift as much as i used to but if i were lifting i would i would lift fasted as well uh, because it gives me that much more energy uh, to use for that workout rather than consider eating a bowl of oatmeal, right? And then going for a run. I can't do that. No, I know I mean, some it, people it, do, but I can't. It, I can't work out on a full stomach. And I think I think there's a certain amount of training your body as well, right? Yeah. To training your body on how to process and digest food while you're still working. Yeah. Um, for me, though, it's much easier to, to do it fasted. And so... Um, I love the idea of starting the day off with a juice or having that juice and just giving your body some more time off from having to digest. The kind of meals that a lot of people consume in the standard American diet, I mean, they're sitting there for hours and hours and hours, mm -hmm. right? I mean, are you ever giving your digestive system a break to yeah. just, and then imagine if you did what 
your body could use that other energy for, whether it's repairing other parts of your body, whether it's just using it be, to be able to exercise or do be more mobile. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just, there's all kinds of benefits in my opinion to fasting and or juicing and things yeah. like that, that they just give a break to your digestive system. Well, and you get all those nutrients with the juice without being so hard on having your body on having to break everything down, but you're, that's where the energy comes from. And that's where feeling so good comes from. And regenerating cells and different things in your body from the juicing. So it's, it's really powerful. Number four, healthy sugar. No, this is not an oxymoron. Juices contain simple sugars that we need for energy. However, because they are combined with other healthful nutrients, they are not harmful as are refined sugars. So we already talked about this a little bit, you know, get more veggies than fruit in there, but some of that, you know, that sugar from the fruit and the energy and everything, it's not bad. And you're not processing sugars like what you have in Lucky Charms and frosted mini wheats and the standard American diet, what people are eating for breakfast every morning. Yeah, and some argue that sugar is sugar, right? That whatever it is, it's still breaking down and, and turns into sugars where, I, and I disagree, and I'm trying to think who we heard talk about it. Dr. Patrick, you'll remember. Quillen? Yes, Dr. Patrick Quillen, yep. where he talks about the right spin and the left spin of sugars yep. and, and the difference there and how our body responds differently to it. So I absolutely agree that there's a difference between a fruit sugar and a bag full of, you know, white refined sugar. Yeah. And, and at yep. the same time, I still think that you have to be mindful of how much sugar you're, you're getting. That's why, I mean, just just putting a bunch of apples through the juicer, I think it's great. I think you will get some benefit to that, but you're also getting a, a large amount of sugars, Yeah. right? So consider that it may be more beneficial to make that a whole lot of spinach and cucumber and celery, and then add a couple apples in there for maybe the sweetness and the extra juice and, and the nutrients that you get from it, but not doing just a straight fruit juice. Yep, absolutely. Number three, the complete package. When you juice, you get the whole package, all the nutrients found in fruits and vegetables. This means natural nutrients in natural proportions, not added sugars like those found in juices on the supermarket shelves. So here's where, here's where I agree and I disagree a little bit on the list, right? We talk about the complete package. I think that there is an argument there for not getting the fibers that you would get if you were using like a um, a Vitamax and just uh, blending the entire fruit or the entire vegetable. I just think there's a difference, right? I think if you're making a smoothie, then you are definitely taxing your digestive system more to be able to process it. Now, the benefits there is having that fiber and the fiber helps regulate the at the speed at which you absorb the nutrients, mm -hmm. right? So you're not going to get that huge sugar rush and crash, right? If you have a lot of fruits in there. Um, so I think it's just understanding what you're using them for, right? And I think smoothies are great. I think it's great to get those fibers. I think personally, first thing in the morning that a juice is better for me for the, for the reasons that we talked about with the digestive system and giving it a break and it just being able to process and get those nutrients. Yeah. And, and I think, um, you're absolutely right. You know, the difference between smoothie and juicing, um, there's a big difference there in the fact that you have to digest what's in that smoothie. If I had to choose between a smoothie in the morning and juicing, it would just be juicing for me to start my day off. But I don't think smoothies are bad either. I think you just have to figure out what works for you. And, and for me, it's juicing. And when I say smoothie, consider that I'm talking about ones that you make at home. Not necessarily the one that you go to the store and buy and they've loaded it up with yogurts or ice cream or... Some powder all, that they put in there or, for or, flavor. Yeah, a bunch of other stuff that gets yeah. added in there that, that I'm talking about getting your, your Vitamax out and tossing in the the bananas and the oranges and the apples and the, the leafy greens, all of it whole and just blending it up with some ice and, and a little bit of water. Yep. Um so number two on our list is juicing is a great source of antioxidants and it also is uh, great for anti-aging um, and preventing aging. We talked a little bit earlier, you know, and a lot of that's tied to preventing disease and things like that too in your body. Um, a healthier body is going to age better, but um, it's, it's great in protecting against cell oxidation. Um, it's great in alleviating and preventing diseases that could lead to a quicker aging in the body. Um, and, 
you know, there's just so many benefits to all of those, those nutrients. You get the phytochemicals, um, the bioavailability of the nutrients when you're juicing them and, and what that does in reversing cell damage and creating healthy cells. Um, all of those things that contribute to aging less as we age, which everybody wants that, right? Everybody wants to, you know, the, the term fountain of youth, everybody wants to be healthier, um, longer. They want to live longer. They want to age well. And I mean, for all the reasons we've talked about with juicing, it contributes to that in a big way. Well, and, and it's not just juicing, right? It's the consumption of, and I'm going to say even more vegetables than even fruits, right? So I, I, I often we package fruits and vegetables together and, and I feel like they have, you know, fruits definitely have their place, but I'm, I talk more in general of vegetables. So the large consumption of vegetables is naturally going to help you age better and give you the antioxidants. Juicing is just an efficient way to get it into your body. Juicing is almost an insurance policy for those of us that are too, that, that don't eat enough vegetables on a regular basis anyway, that it would just, you know, we're, we're just better off throwing it into a juicer, drinking it and knowing who, at least I've got my greens for the day, yeah. regardless on what happens throughout the rest of the day, whether I'm out and about and I need to eat something quicker or whatever it is, it just allows you to get those. But in general, you know, large consuming large amounts of vegetables is going to help you age better. It's going to prevent more diseases and it's going to give you a lot of these nutrients that you need. Now, the only caveat that I'll put on that is it does matter where you're sourcing your vegetables from. Because with soil depletion and nutrient depletion in the soil, right, we're over farming. Um, our, our vegetables are not as rich in nutrients as they were 50 years ago, 100 years ago, right? So I say consuming large amounts of vegetables and it matters that you're getting organic vegetables, right? It matters that, in my opinion, you get it from a local um, farmer's market and you're getting it from local farmers who aren't overproducing their land and their soil. You're just getting a much more nutrient de dense vegetable, right? And that's what juicing essentially does is it allows you, like you said, to put half of a container of spinach into your juicer, which you would never get all of those nutrients by eating it. You just couldn't fit half a container of spinach in your belly, no. right? But by juicing it, you're getting all of those uh, a lot more nutrients out of it, yeah. which helps in the fact that our vegetables are less nutrient dense than they used to be. Yeah. So the juicing also helps in that context, right? It helps you get the the proper amount of nutrients that you need that you may not get just from eating it. Well, and when we talk about the difference between a smoothie and a juice, if you're th that's another big difference. So I'm glad you brought up that point. I mean, when you're making a smoothie and throwing things in there, that's like eating it. You still have to digest it. You know, it's not just the juice of those ingredients you're putting in, but it's like you're actually eating it. So you can only consume so much of a smoothie too. Um, you know, and I spoke about in the last podcast, like let's just talk about the juice that I made this morning. I mean, I did three fourths of a container of spinach. I did two cucumbers. I did like five or six stalks of celery. I put a huge handful of carrots in there, apples, lemons, ginger, like again, if you put all that in a smoothie, first of all, it doesn't taste good. And second, like you think about consuming all of that in a drink. That's a lot. Whereas with the juicing, um, you get all of that benefit in the juice of the nutrients and the phytochemicals and the vitamins and the minerals from drinking that juice that you, you can't consume that in a smoothie. You can't sit down and eat that. I also wanted to say that on the anti-aging thing, one of, I've talked about improved sleep, energy, um, health overall with juicing, but truly like the, the anti-aging properties of it, skin, nails, hair, um, how my body regulates its weight, being um, stronger when it comes to working out and things like that. I, I really attribute a lot of that to juicing and the anti-aging benefits of juicing. I mean, I'm walking proof of that. I've seen a drastic change in my life from when I didn't juice to now when I juice every single day. Absolutely. Let's move to number one. Number one is enzymes. Fruits and vegetable juices provide a convenient source of enzymes. Although people don't think of them much, enzymes are extremely important to health. They spark the essential chemical reactions we need to live. They're necessary for digesting food, for stimulating the brain, for providing cellular energy, and for repairing all tissue. It, enzymes are very interesting because they get forgotten about often right? And we are born with a certain amount of enzymes. We have a certain amount of enzymes in our bank. And as we're eating food, if the food that we're consuming doesn't contain 
enough enzymes in it to process it, then we have to pull from our own bank of enzymes to break that food down. This is where cooking food comes and and overcooking food and overheating food because it destroys enzymes, right? So as you you know, eating a raw piece of meat will contain all of the enzymes that your body needs to break down that piece of meat. When you cook it, now you're cooking out some of those enzymes. And when you consume that piece of meat now, your body has to use some of its own enzymes to be able to break that meat down. Yeah. And that's why it, it really matters. I mean, for those of you that consume meat, eating it rare, medium rare, you know, even medium, you start getting too far down you know, the overdone part and it changes the property of the meat completely. Mm-hmm. And it becomes less and less um, nutritious. It's the same thing with fruits and vegetables as well, right? If you heat it, and I believe it's over 112 degrees, maybe it's 115, don't quote me on it, but it's around that temperature. If you're cooking your vegetables, if you're cooking things like that, that's also breaking down, sorry, killing the enzymes that are in it, that your body needs to digest it. So by juicing and having it raw, you're getting all of those enzymes that your body needs to break it down, and then some. Right, and so now are you flooding your body with more enzymes and it actually needs to break down that juice and then your body can use those enzymes to break other things down, right? And I take an enzyme daily, a proteolytic enzyme that gets in there and I take it on an empty stomach to put more enzymes in my body to go break down other areas in my body that may not be as healthy, right? That could use some enzymes to break those down. So enzymes are, you know, I think that we, we've written about them before and we call them little micro miracles. Um, and they really are, and they're overlooked a lot of times. And that's why, that's why raw matters, right? That's why unprocessed matters a lot of times because of that enzyme, the enzymes that you're getting. Yeah. I mean, enzymes create chemical reactions in our body. So when we talk about, you know, the raw juicing and we talk about getting those raw ingredients, it's creating those chemical reactions. And like you mentioned, different enzymes doing different things, but Again, it goes back to those benefits we talk about of increased energy, better digestion, cell regeneration, talking about anti-aging that comes from the enzymes that come in the raw fruits and vegetables that you're juicing. Super powerful. We could do a whole podcast on enzymes. And we probably will. And we probably should um, because they are so, so, so important. And I think they're very misunderstood. And I don't think people are educated enough on the power of enzymes in our body and in our diet every day. Um, so that that concludes our top 10 list. So you asked me in the beginning of episode one what some of my tips and tricks for juicing are. Um, I'm going to ask the same question back to you. And while I give you a second to think about it, I wanted to share a few tips and tricks. We had talked in the last podcast about extended juicing which most people would call a detox. We're not gonna get into detoxing today, but I will say that when you start juicing, so let's say you do like a seven to 14 day juice cleanse or detox, if you will, um, you need to be careful because just like we just talked about enzymes in the ingredients and the raw ingredients and what you're doing, when you juice, you are getting tons of vitamins, minerals, nutrients, enzymes. Um, It's really packing the punch for your body. And think about what that does for your body. If you haven't been doing it, if you haven't been eating clean, if you haven't been living healthy, like right now, as I mentioned, I'm eating ultra clean and I'm juicing. Drinking a juice in the morning for me is nothing. It's like just normal for me. My body gets it. It understands it. It's what it's used to right now. However, if you haven't been juicing, and you just start juicing, you're gonna notice some things in your body. It's cleaning out your system. I mean, like for me, I my body has um, these sensors that go off like crazy with my lymph nodes, more so than most people I know. When something's wrong with my body, I know immediately. I can tell after eating sugar and gluten and dairy, like my lymph nodes get inflamed and I can feel it. I just, my body censors it so quickly. Um, but if I have not been juicing for a long time, I, I feel kind of this, this you know, um, upset with my lymph nodes. I can feel my body doing weird things. And at first I feel sick. I'm like, oh, why do I not feel good? Like, I, it, this doesn't feel good to me. What that is, is your body cleansing itself, detoxing itself out. It's the juice working. So whether or not you're starting to juice and you just want to juice once a day and that's going to be your thing, 
be careful in the first few weeks of doing that with your body because you're going to notice changes and it's going to feel weird at first. It just impacts your body. Your body's not used to it and it's cleaning your system out. I would be even more careful if you go down the road of doing a seven to 14 day juice cleanse or detox, you have to be so careful in supporting your body through that because you are literally getting rid of all of the toxins and the waste and the garbage that's in your body. And just like it takes a long time to fill your body up with that stuff, eating bad over time, it takes time for your body to process all of that out. You know, they talk about it feeling flu-like and feeling like super sick and your stomach's upset and your body's fatigued. It's your body working all of that stuff out. So whether you're going to one a day juicing or you're going to go and do a seven to 14 day juice cleanse and then go to one a day juicing, don't just think that you're going to start juicing all of a sudden. You're like, I feel great because there's a detox process that happens through that. It, it's interesting because as you as you talk about that, and I've done all of those um, detoxes and cleanse cleanses, and it's interesting around the um, you talk about doing a juicing cleanse seven days, fourteen days. I mean, definitely don't start with something that long. Start with with a few days, three days, and see how I, it goes. Yeah, I highly suggest starting day one on a Friday. Um, day two would be Saturday, and day three would be Sunday. Day two and three are going to be the harder days. Friday's going to be relatively easy. If you have to work, it, it, it's fine to start there. What's interesting, though, is I've played around with different um, ways of eating and things like that. And when you go into keto, like I've done uh, keto diet for the simple fact that I want my body to be trained to use different fuel sources, mm -hmm. right? We're, we're highly trained to use glucose as a fuel source. And I'd, I'd like to be able to use um, ketones as a fuel source and use fat as a, really use fat as a, as a fuel source, really. Um, I say all that to say that on day two or three of going keto, you start getting these flu-like symptoms as well. If you go day two or three on extended water fasting, you start getting those symptoms as well. And my the thing that's, that I'm just thinking about right now as we're talking and doing this podcast is a lot of times that's an electrolyte depletion. And so um, when I do a, a water fast, on, I, I'm taking a lot of potassium and magnesium to make sure that I keep my electrolytes full. full. When you're doing a juice cleanse, it's doing the same thing. Not only is it detoxing your body, but it's pulling out all of the stored liquids and, and inflammation that you have, which also pulls through a lot of electrolytes and can leave you depleted. So I, I'm talking in circles here to say that, and I don't know this to be fact, this is just my experience, is taking a potassium and a magnesium and even a sodium, right? Even just a, a couple shakes of pink Himal Himalayan salt in a glass of water to keep your electrolytes full when you're doing a detox of any sort can keep those flu sy symptoms away, can keep you feeling better. So whether it's a extended water fast or you're doing a, a juice cleanse for three, seven, 10 days, or even going on a keto diet, which also, um, you know, you lose a lot of water weight in the beginning, it gets rid of a lot of stored fluids that a lot of times just replacing those electrolytes and doing it from day one is going to make a big difference and have you feel better. That's an awesome tip. I love that. Any other tips you've thought of? Juicing, the ch a couple tips. So one, I absolutely agree with making more than one day's worth of juice at a time. It's, I have two little girls, two and four. Um, it's, it's a challenge just keeping up with them and trying to work and doing all of that. So um, I think making juice for several days and freezing it, I don't remember what the statistics are, but essentially, you know, you can freeze it for, um, I think, five days. Obviously, leave a little bit of room at the top of your mason jar when you freeze it um, for it to expand. Mm -hmm. We've learned that the hard way. But um, freezing it or making more than one at a time. The other tip that I will give is if you can't juice, look for a juice replacement. Um, and I say that in like finding a green superfood. So I will shamelessly plug our organic greens, right? Because it is a powder um, and it's a superfood. Here's, here's the challenge is if you're going to use something like that, you've got to know what you're getting into, right? Because there's different kinds of processing these green quote unquote powders, right? You can have a pulp powder, right? Which it takes, I don't know, five or six pounds, you know, to, to extract down to just one pound of powder. Or you can have a juice powder, which can take like 30 pounds of ingredients to get down. The difference is, is like our organic greens, it gets juiced first and then dehydrated into a powder. 
So you're still getting a green juice. You just add water to it. Um, and I don't, I, I, I'm not saying that you need to use that as a replacement every day. Um, I think that there's very few replacements for just good, natural, raw ingredients like fruits and vegetables. And I also understand life and I know that life happens. And so you having something in your back pocket like our organic greens or another green superfood powder out there that you can use to ensure you're getting your greens throughout the day is essential. Um, and, and I'm going to talk for a second really quickly. I, I didn't want to go off on this tangent, but I'm going to. If you're looking for a green superfood powder that you're going to use on the days that you can't juice, uh, a couple key tips. One, make sure that it's USDA certified organic. Uh, we can't say this enough. I mean, any... We'll keep saying it. Yeah, we'll it's keep so saying important. it. It's so We're talking about concentrations of things, whether it's a capsule, whether it's a powder. These are highly concentrated. Right, you take just a scoop of our organic greens, mix it in 10 ounces of water, and now you have your juice. Right, it's highly concentrated. If it's not organic, you're getting the pesticides, the herbicides. Um, if it's you know, uh, you're, you're getting GMO crops if it's not non GMO. So just make sure that you're getting a, a really clean source. Um, I generally think that you know, having 20 or so ingredients in your green juice helps get the full spectrum. So you're getting fruits, vegetables, seeds, herbs, um, even mushrooms in it. So I think that that's important to have. Um, and again, a, a dehydrated green juice is what you're looking for as opposed to like a pulp powder, right? Um, and then look at the ingredients. I think the last thing is it's got to taste good, right? If, if it doesn't taste good, you're not going to use it. Um, what was really interesting and we were talking during the break of our podcast was talking to Travis who helps us film this and he says that he uses the organic greens as the sweetener in his juice. So he may make a green juice out of all vegetables and um, our organic greens, we have a, a sweetened version uh, with stevia and he uses that instead of fruit, instead of an apple or something like that. It adds mm -hmm. the sweetness to it. So I think there's a lot of ways that you can play with it. Um, Tip number one, get a good juicer. I like Breville's because they're easy to clean up. Um, I've had some of the others in the past. And, and the cheaper ones, not only can they sometimes not have that large um, feeding tube, we'll call it, right, to be able to st stick the fruits and vegetables in, but they have a lot of nooks and crannies on the inside. And if it's hard, if it takes more and more time to even clean up, it's not just the time to make the juice. If all of a sudden it takes you 45 minutes a day to make your juice and clean up from it, it's going I wouldn't to be, juice if it took me that exactly. long. Exactly. It's going to be a lot <laughs> yeah. harder. Yeah. So yes, maybe spend a little bit more, spend a hundred bucks and, and get the Breville and, you know, or if you can afford more than that, even get a nicer one that has really easy cleanup. Um, tip number two, always get USDA certified organic fruits and vegetables if and when you can. Um, wash them. If you can't get them, wash them as well as you can. Um on days that you can't make multiple days at a time, on days that you can't juice, have a backup, have a green juice powder backup that you can throw a scoop of it in a cup of water on the go, drink it down, and uh, you know that you're getting a lot of your nutrients that way. The last tip is if you're gonna do a cleanse uh, of any cleanse, whether it's, or a fast, I'll call it, whether it's a water fast, whether it's a juice cleanse, or whether you're starting a new way of eating that um, pulls a lot of water out of your body in a short amount of time, like a ketogenic diet can do, um, replace with electrolytes. At the, even if you forget to do it on the first couple of days, if you start feeling a headache come on, go give a couple grinds of pink Himalayan salt into some water and drink it down. Now, I'm not saying take a scoop or you're going to be running straight to the bathroom right afterwards, mm -hmm. but electrolytes matter. And I, I just see people all over online talking about these flu symptoms, whether it's juicing or keto or whatever it is. It's just an electrolyte dep depletion. It's the same thing when I go running. I take potassium pills before I run. Um, just keeping my electrolytes up is going to help keep my body just fueled better yeah. all around. I mean, I think we have to be careful in saying that too because I think even if they um, do something to keep those electrolytes up, you're still going to feel some impact there. You just are, especially if your body's not been clean and you're not eating clean, you're probably still going to feel some of those flu symptoms because your body's working stuff out of it. So I think it's super important um, to do that. I agree a hundred percent, but also know that you're going to experience some symptoms with that and it's normal. It's just your body's way of telling you it's, it's cleaning its system out. 
Agreed. And, and juicing just in the morning, you probably won't feel it as much. I think you'll find yourself being more regular. Yeah. Right? Oh, so 100%. If, if, if you're ever having Digestion, challenges going. Yep. Yep. Digestion, gut morning. health, everything that just goes along with that for sure. Absolutely. Well, listen, I hope that you've enjoyed today's podcast and the top 10 reasons why you should juice every single day. If you enjoy this podcast, help us spread the word. Will you please go to iTunes and give us a rating, whatever stars you feel we are worth. Hopefully it's a four or five star. Give us a review as well. The more reviews we get, um, the more iTunes values us as podcasters. And when people are listening to other podcasts that are similar or health related, they will show us as the recommended in the recommended section. So um, reviewing us, rating us really goes a long way. As always, you can head over to empoweringyouorganically.com and you can watch the videos, you can download the audio, you can also pick up the show notes um, and the transcripts. And if we've referenced any kind of links or products or things like that, you can find links to, to everything there. And speaking of downloads, we just broke 50,000 downloads, which is awesome for a brand new podcast for us. So thank you very much at home. Now, we've had hundreds of thousands of listens to the podcast, but people that are downloading it regularly every single week, making sure that they tune in, um, thank you. The more that you do that, the more uh, we know that we're reaching you and we're giving you valuable information and the more we can reach more people. So the more downloads we get, the more it gets shared on iTunes and the greater our reach is. So Thank you very much for all the love that you've given us, all the feedback that you've given us, and for tuning in every single week. Terry ann thank you for joining me on today's podcast, and we will see you all next week. 